Hello, Gasheads, and welcome back to the Rose Report, where you join me, and it's, you know, a couple of days after the Portsmouth draw. Um, I've said this before on, a t- on tweets, uh, but I think, you know, with hindsight, that's probably a fair result. Um, let me guys know your thoughts on that. Uh, if you are new around here, be sure to like, subscribe, and do share it with your friends. Uh, you join me today, I'm going to do a little bit of an Ipswich preview, uh, you know, the first round of the Carabao Cup for Rovers. Uh, and we couldn't have probably got a, you know, it's a regionalised competition. And I don't think we could have got a further away uh, opposition. So fair play to any of the gassers making that journey over there. Uh, I know for one that that was way too far for me on a Wednesday night. Uh, so hopefully, you know, the boys can uh, put a good performance in uh, and send the gas heads home happy. But, you know, it's a, it's a tough task. Ipswich obviously got promoted out of League One themselves last year. Uh and started off very well on Saturday with a 2-1 victory away at last year's playoff semi-finalist Sunderland. So, you know, it's a good, it's another test for Barnes boys. And uh, for me, it's one that I'm excited about. Uh, you know, I think you've got to sort of balance the, you know, the resting of players, but also keeping that momentum going. Like I said, a good result on Saturday for us and for them. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what Joey Barton does. Um, I think in terms of the opposition, you know, Kieran McKenna is... Probably up there with, you know, one of the best managers in the EFL at the minute. You know, he's still very young, but he's got a certain style of play that he wants to implement with his team. And, you know, to, to great effect, to be quite honest. Uh, last season, you know, they finished second behind Plymouth. But, you know, the points tally they finished on is is one of the best we've ever seen. And, and certainly for me, you know, watching them play their home and away tie, you know, that's a, that's a proper championship team. So, you know despite the fact that McKenna has indicated they will be resting a few players, I still believe that we'll be up against a strong championship outfit. Um, so, you know, that for me, I wouldn't be looking at that game and thinking, you know, let's go out there and play all the kids, you know, get Lawrence in, uh, get Ryan Jones in, you know, put them on the bench and maybe bring them on in the second half. And for me, you know, you've got to combine it of being, you know, an experienced team and then also, you know, rotating the squad a bit letting some players that haven't had as many minutes in pre-season or, you know, didn't play as much as they'd like to on Saturday. Um, But yeah, I think Barton's attitude is spot on here. You know, it's another competition. Cup runs always give you a bit of motivation, you know, get the fans on board, give them something to shout about, uh, as well as, you know, a few extra pounds in the coffers. So, you know, I'm looking forward to it. I think think it's another good test for us. Um, You know, again, it's against a team that want to play good football. So... I think that actually suits us a bit better, to be honest, than, you know, a team that sits back. Um, So, yeah, with that in mind, my team for Wednesday night's game would be Cox and Goal. Um, You know, I think having made his debut on Saturday, he's done very well there. Uh, But you want, you know, bed him in as early as possible, especially with, you know, the likes of goalkeepers. You want them to feel confident with their back four, you know, with the team's instructions. He looks very good on the ball. But one more game, you know, a bit less pressure on this one, away from home again. Um, You know, two very difficult games to go into. And if he can get through this one fairly well, then, you know, you'd feel that he'd be confident within himself and with the players around him. And, you know, that will bode very well for the season. Uh, so I would stick with Cox, you know, no Shaw's integrated in the team. He, you know, he knows what we know what he's about, he knows what the team's about. Um, and to be honest, with goalkeepers, I don't feel like fatigue is, is a real issue here. So I'd stick with Cox, like I said, get him embedded in the Rovers team. Um, I would keep the exact same wing backs, to be quite honest. You know, there might be shouts to bring Gibbons in. I'm not sure on his fitness. I wouldn't be angry if he did come in. Uh, for me personally, I think Luca Hall had one of one of his worst games I've seen in a while, actually. You know, there's a couple of chances he missed the header or mistimed it and it could have led to a goal. So, you know, I'll get him another game, get him a bit of confidence um, and hopefully, you know, it sort of freshens him up a little bit. And then on the other side, Gordon. Again, could be shouts to bring in Ryan Jones, but for me, Gordon has had a little bit of a niggle. So, you know, he's at a, still at a decent age where, you know, you, you don't have to manage injuries as much as other players. So I would put him straight back into the team, let him have another 90 minutes or so. Um, and yeah, the uh, the areas I would be changing are centre-backs. You know, I, I would actually bring two brand new centre-backs in. I would go Kramer and Taylor. Uh, Kramer obviously looked good when he came on against Brentford. Um, not Brentford, sorry, against Swansea um, and Chesterfield. And then you've got Connor Taylor, who did actually come on on Saturday. And I think most gas heads will agree on this, is that he actually looks a little bit rusty. So I'll be putting him back in that team 
Um, get him up to date. You know, he probably hasn't played as much as he'd like for Stoke over the last couple of months. So, yeah, this is a great game to utilise it and just, you know, give him some minutes, get him embedded in the team because um, we all know what what a wonderful player he can be. And he shows flashes of it on Saturday, but he looked a little bit rusty. Uh, I think Barton has hinted that he will be starting this game and it seems perfectly made for him. So, yeah, that will be my back four. Uh, and then in the midfield, I would give Anthony Evans a start um, alongside Grant, um, you know, People might say it's too early for him, but, you know, I'd get him in there at the start, see how he does, you know, in this 4-4-2 formation that we seem to be playing. Um, and then on the wings, I would go for Sinclair and Collins. So I would actually take Thomas out. You know, I think they were saying that his injury needed to be managed. If this was a league game, I would be starting Thomas. But as it's not, I'd have Sinclair in there, you know, have Thomas on the bench. If we need him for the last 30, 20 minutes, bring him on. But I wouldn't be risking him. You know, if he picked up an injury now and was out for three months, we'd be gutted. So, you know, bring Scott Sinclair in. Uh, on the left, I would have Aaron Collins. You know, he's a player that rarely seems to get injured. So I'd be more than happy with him to start this game. Uh, and then Brown and Marquis up front. Uh, and again, you know, these are players that you want them to start building those relationships. You know, Brown, Collins and Marquis, especially. That's a three that you want to, you know, almost have a, a what do you call it? Um or psychotic, uh, you know the word I'm looking for. But yeah, you want them to have that sort of, they can read what each, each other are doing without even speaking to each other. So yeah, I, I would have those three. You know, like I said, you, you want to put out a decent team here that can match Ipswich. Um, and then, you know, if it does get to 60 minutes and, and Barton wants to mix it up a little bit, then albeit go for it. But yeah, for me, that would be my team. Let me know what your guys will be in the comments below. Um, and I'm going to go for a 2-1 victory for Ipswich. You know, like I said, I think they're a great team. I think this Rovers team are probably going to score in most games this season. But I think, unfortunately, you know, without a lack of, without a big away falling from the gas heads against a good championship team, uh, it's quite early in the season. I fear that, you know, it could be a loss, but I'll be happy to be proved wrong. So thank you guys for watching. Um, there will be a video on Thursday. Uh, and probably Friday as well, previewing the Barnsley game. So make sure you subscribe if you're new around here. And thank you for watching.